Parallel Lines and Transversals, Lesson 11.1a. A transversal is a line that intersects two lines in the same plane at two different points. So it intersects here and here. And it doesn't matter which direction the parallel lines are going. If a line is intersecting them, it's a transversal. So here we have a set of parallel lines a and B, and we know they're parallel lines because those arrows tell us the two lines are parallel. Transversal T, this red line, and lines A and B form eight angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I want you to keep in mind that a transversal is a line that intersects two lines at two points. So this line is intersecting these two lines at two points, and these lines aren't parallel, but it's still a transversal. So the definition of a transversal is a line that intersects two lines in the same plane at two different points. It didn't say that they had to be parallel. It's just two lines. So there's an exterior and an interior to this diagram, to these to parallel lines in the transversal. We have the exterior on the outside of the parallel lines, and we have the interior on the inside of the parallel lines. Between lines A and B, between them inside here, is the interior, and outside of the parallel lines A and B is the exterior. Now let's talk about some angle pairs formed by a transversal. There are corresponding angles that lie on the same side of the transversal T. So here we have our parallel lines and we have our red transversal T. There are corresponding angles that lie on the same side of the transversal T on the same side of A and B. So if you look at A, we've got this orange dot here for a corresponding angle to this orange here for the corresponding angle. So 1 and 5, those angles are corresponding angles. They're both on the left side of the transversal, and they're both above A and B. So angle 1 is above A, and angle 5 is above B. So they're corresponding angles. Angle 3 and angle 7 are both on the left side of the transversal, and both are below A and B. So we've got angle 3 and angle 7. They're both below the lines and on the left side. Angle 2 and angle 6. Let's move our little dots here. Angle 2 and angle 6. They are both on the right side of the transversal, and both are above lines A and B. Then we have angle 4 and angle 8. So we've got this interior angle on the right side, and this exterior angle on the right side. They are both on the right side of the transversal, and both are below A and B. This one's below A, this one's below B, they're both on the right side. They are corresponding angles, and corresponding angles are congruent. If we took a protractor and measured angle 4, it would be the same as the measure of angle 8. Now take a look at these. We have alternate interior angles. They're non-adjacent angles. That means they're not next to each other. 3 and 4 would be adjacent. They're next to each other. 3 and 6 are not next to each other. They're non-adjacent. And they're angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal T between A and B. So they're on the interior of the parallel line. So they're alternate. That means they're not next to each other. And they're on the interior. So they're inside the parallel lines. So angle 3 and angle 6 are on opposite sides of T, that transversal, on the inside of A and B. And if we look at angle 4 and angle 5, they're on opposite sides of the transversal T and on the inside of A and B. They're also alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles are congruent. They have the same angle measure. Here we have alternate exterior angles. 
they lie on the opposite sides of the transversal T outside lines A and B. So they're outside of these parallel lines. Angle 1 and angle 8 lie on opposite sides of T. They're on opposite sides of T. And the outside of A and B, they're alternate exterior angles. And angle 2, right here, and angle 7 lie on opposite sides of T and are outside of A and B. Let me fix that. They are alternate exterior angles, and they are congruent. If we measured angle 2 with a protractor, it would be the same measure as angle 7. Same side interior angles lie on the same side of the transversal T between lines A and B. They're on the same side of the transversal, and they're on the interior, on the inside. So angles 3 and 5 are both on the left of T, the transversal, on the inside of A and B. And angle 4, right here, and angle 6, right here, are both on the right side of T, the transversal, on the inside of A and B. They are same side interior angles. And same side interior angles are supplementary. The sum of their angle measures is 180 degrees. So the other ones I showed you, the angle measures were congruent. But for same side interior angles, they're supplementary. And you can remember that because same side, SS, is S supplementary. So we need to keep in mind that the angles may not be labeled with numbers. They may be labeled with letters. Here we have line AB, and we have line CD. We have our transversal EF, and then we have their intersections G and H. For corresponding angles, we have CGE, that's this one right here, and AHG, that's this one right here. These two angles are corresponding angles. Then we have CGH, CGH, that's this angle here, and AHF, AHF, that's this angle here. Those are corresponding angles. Then we have EGD, EGD, so that would be this angle, and we have GHB, GHB, that would be this angle. Those are corresponding angles. And then we have angle DGH, DGH, that's this one, and angle BHF, BHF, that's this one. Those are corresponding angles. So remember when you're seeing the angles written like this, labeled with letters, whatever the middle one is, that is the vertex. So for CGE, CGE, we see G in the middle. That's the vertex of the angle. And for angle AHG, H is the center letter. That is the vertex of this angle. For alternate interior angles, we have angle CGH, CGH. So remember, they're going to be on the inside. And GHB. G, H, B. See how on the opposite sides of the transversal, but they're on the inside of the parallel lines? Then the other alternate interior angles we have are D, G, H, D, G, H, that's this one, and G, H, A, G, H, A. So those are alternate interior angles on opposite sides of the transversal on the interior of the parallel lines. For the alternate exterior angles, we have angle CGE, CGE, and we have BHF, BHF. Look at that. They're in the exterior of the parallel lines on opposite sides of the transversal. The other alternate exterior angles we have are angle EGD, EGD, and AHF. They're on opposite sides of the transversal, and they're on the exterior. And finally, for our same side interior angles, we have angle CGH. CGH and AHG. 
They're on the same side of the transversal in the interior. So our other same side interior angles are angle D, G, H, and angle G, H, B. G, H, B. They're on the same side of the transversal, they're both on the right side, and they're in the interior. If you can remember the exterior and interior, that's really going to help you. So back in seventh grade math in chapter 8, lesson 8.4a and b, we learned about complementary and supplementary angles. Complementary angles total 90 degrees. So they'll make a right angle when you add their angle measures together, and supplementary angles will total 180 degrees when you add their angle measures together. If you didn't learn that last year, or if you've forgotten, those videos are linked in this description. We're finished with part A. We're going to move on to B, justifying angle relationships. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you understood this, and I also hope you join me for the second part of the lesson. Bye.